let's take a look at the history of bureaucracy. Administrative agencies have existed since the birth of our nation. The Departments of War, Foreign Affairs, Treasury, Post Office, and Patents were established by the first Congress. These agencies provided needed services such as mail delivery and protection from foreign enemies. Their regulation of Americans was minimal. Later, in 1887, Congress created the Interstate Commerce Commission, the first federal agency with authority to regulate people and business operations directly. The boom era for federal administrative agencies was during the Great Depression and World War II. President Franklin D. Roosevelt initiated the creation of many new agencies as part of his New Deal efforts to revive the economy and to correct other social problems. Congress supported the president's efforts through legislation creating new agencies and programs such as the Tennessee Valley Authority, Works Progress Administration, Agricultural Adjustment Act, Conservation Corps, and Social Security. The authority and number of administrative agencies continued to expand in the following decades, particularly during the 1970s. Several factors have contributed to growth in government and specifically the growth in the administrative state. First, the increasing interdependence of people is a significant factor. Today, nearly everyone provides highly specialized services. We depend on others for our food, healthcare, technology, and other needs. This change, along with our increasing population, is driving people together, but often in impersonal ways. This interdependence without social connectedness, also known as social distance, not only causes greater conflict, but also leaves society without social infrastructure to informally resolve disputes. The need for more law and government is a consequence. In order for people to be comfortable with their food, medicine, and other products, assurances of safety and quality are needed. A second factor is the growing expectation of the public for its government to regulate in new ways. So-called social engineering is an example. A third factor is the expectation that government will provide more services and benefits than in the early years of the Republic. The framers of the U.S. Constitution did not live in a world where government provided recreation, educational tutoring, unemployment assistance, welfare, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security benefits. It was the perceived need for government to address the complex economic ills of the nation, as opposed to trusting the free market to right itself. A fourth factor is increasing mobility of people. Today, domestic and international travel is common. In addition, individuals and families are more likely to relocate for employment, education, retirement, and other opportunity. To illustrate the growth of the federal government, consider the number of people employed by the government. In 1800, 3,000 people were employed by the federal government. There are approximately 5,084,000 people in the United States at this time employed by the federal government. By 1995, the number of employees had increased to nearly 3 million and more than 1% of the total population.